Ten years prior to the events of Star Wars The Force Awakens, a family is on the run from Jedi hunter Ochi and the mysterious cult of the Sith. Meanwhile, Lando Calrissian, suffering from the kidnapping of his own daughter, tries to provide help however he can, calling upon Jedi Master Luke Skywalker for aid. In many ways, this novel is the setup for the third entry into the sequel trilogy, The Rise of Skywalker while also setting the stage for the sequel trilogy itself. The family on the run, whom are major characters throughout Shadow of the Sith, are the parents of Rey, and the father happens to be a younger clone of the late Emperor Palpatine, albeit one with no Force connection or adherence to the dark side. The novel does a good job at establishing the basic story of it. The family is on the run, they need help. That's the story of Shadow of the Sith. It's a little frustrating that the novel starts in what feels like the second act of a larger story. We begin things with the parents already on the run, their pursuers already closing in and causing havoc. The initial setup and the beginnings of this extended hunt are a little nebulous, perhaps even unimportant, but knowing more would have been nice regardless. Especially when the backstory of the parents is often overlooked and only fleetingly mentioned, making them come across as a stereotypical loving couple and little else. On the other side of things, Lando Calrissian is in many ways the main character of this novel. He has been searching for his kidnapped daughter for six years now, and in a way, he's desperate. The loss of his daughter weighs him down. It burdens him with guilt and remorse. It's a very interesting place for this roguish, charming smuggler to be in. A far more emotional and damaged place than he's usually seen in, and it's somewhat refreshing working to make Lando a far more fleshed out and sympathetic character than usual. At the same time, he's very much the cool, charming Lando we all know and love, and the writer does a great job of balancing his emotional turmoil and his persona. Connecting these elements is the ever-looming sequel trilogy. Knowing where the trilogy starts and ends means that this novel has to end in defeat for the heroes. Rey's parents cannot succeed in their mission. Lando cannot find his daughter. What this means is that there's a constant underlying sense of dread and despair in this novel. One that tonally sets it apart from other Star Wars novels. This makes Shadow of the Sith one of the most emotional Star Wars novels ever written. Luke Skywalker comes along and helps his old friend Lando, not only because they are old friends, but because their goal seems to focus on the return of the Sith. Luke's element of the story is the one part that doesn't necessarily have a definitive endpoint it must reach. Kiza, a non-Force user member of the Sith cult, is brandishing Sith artifacts, one of which is the vessel for an ancient Sith Lord who is now manipulating her. Inevitably, Luke and Kiza meet, and as it turns out, they have history. Luke's story has connections to past canonical stories, most notably from the Aftermath trilogy and some comic books. The book does a decent job at reminding readers of these events, but it sometimes goes a little too far, often coming across as someone giving a brief history lesson rather than a natural conversational bringing up to speed sentence. Kiza is a cool looking character with a unique lightsaber, but that's about it. She plays a very standard villainous role, one designed purely to combat Luke Skywalker and distract from the other ongoing stories in Shadow of the Sith. Her ultimate fate is set up to be an emotional one, but it falls a little flat because so little is known about her and we rarely actually see her. The other villain is Ochi, a Jedi hunter hoping to find Rey's parents in order to be rewarded with the location of Exegol, a place he once visited that transformed him into a cybernetic being he despises. His hope is that finding Exegol will reverse the procedure somehow. Ochi's goal is conveyed well, but he is not a sympathetic villain. He is a typical angry, frustrated bad guy, one whom rarely seems capable of facing off against the likes of Luke and Lando. The novel does however do a good job at imbuing him with weapons, assistance and power that then even sings out a little bit more. But like many parts of this novel, Ochi's fate is known, so his journey to that point is what's on display here, and it's a somewhat good one. Another villain is that of Allegiant General Pride, although at this point he is not an Allegiant General. It's nice to see his origins to a certain extent, get an idea of who he is, and to fully flesh out that character. 
He's very different in this novel than what he is in The Rise of Skywalker, and that's really quite interesting. The first half of the novel is very good, setting the stage for what's to come with a fast pace, some surprises and cameos, and plenty of different locations and characters making it seem like a large, vast and diverse galaxy. Sadly, the second half of the novel starts to drag a little bit, with fewer locations, a repetitive stop and search process for the heroes, and lingering in certain areas with little actual story progression. The novel ends on a good point, albeit an emotional one, and perhaps even hints at a sequel, which would be appreciated. Shadow of the Sith does a good job at setting the stage for the sequel trilogy, highlighting the final days of Rey's parents and the quest Luke and Lando go on. As mentioned in The Rise of Skywalker, there are some good action scenes, decent connections to the other canonical events and stories, and tons of emotion and dread that set this novel apart from other Star Wars novels. It isn't perfect, nor does it necessarily make Rise of Skywalker better or worse, but it definitely fleshes out certain elements of it, like the dagger used by Ochi, the Sith cult, and a few more, which is probably what was expected of Shadow of the Sith.